Hello, good evening and welcome to St Martin's Broad Main for evening prayer. It's Wednesday the 25th of July, so we'll be using the common worship provision for evening prayer on Wednesday, which you'll find at the beginning of the Red Book. After prayer during the day, there's morning and evening prayer for seasons and ordinary time, and you're looking for evening prayer on Wednesday. It's also the festival of James the Apostle. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's descending. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds, burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also up to you. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle the Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we'll have a quick go at uh, joining you with the book so I can get some page numbers for you. Uh, Yes, yeah, so 6 to 1, it's James the Apostle, so we're doing some extra, um, got some extra provision. So 6 to 1, a song of Christ's appearing for the canticle. to the Psalms first, don't we? Think about it. So um, if you want to keep a finger in there, the Psalm is 94. Psalms at the back of the book. Psalm 94 then. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, 
O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine out in majesty. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Give the arrogant their just deserts. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall the evildoers boast and pour out such impudent words? They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They murder the widow and the stranger, the orphans they put to death. And yet they say the Lord will not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Consider, most stupid of people, you fools, when will you understand? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He who corrects the nation, shall he not punish? He who teaches the people, does he lack knowledge? The Lord knows every human thought, that they are but a breath. Blessed are those who chasten, O Lord, whom you instruct from your law. That you may give them rest in days of adversity, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not fail his people, neither, neither will he forsake his inheritance. For justice shall return to the righteous, and all that are true of heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not helped me, my soul would soon have been put to silence. And when I said, my foot has slipped, your mercy, loving mercy, O Lord, upheld me. In the multitude of cares that troubled my heart, your comforts have refreshed my soul. Will you have anything to do with the throne of wickedness, with which fashions evil through its law? They gather together against the life of the righteous, and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold, and my God the rock of my trust. He will turn against them their own wickedness and silence them through their own malice. The Lord our God will put them to silence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. The prayer that follows may be used in silence. And so to page 621, which we turned to earlier in error for the canticle. Which begins, Christ was believed. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Christ Jesus was revealed in the flesh and vindicated in the spirit. He was seen by angels and proclaimed among the nations. Believed in throughout the world, he was taken up in glory. This will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only sovereign, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light. To the King of kings and Lord of lords be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Our first Bible reading is Jeremiah 26, verses 1 to 15. This is uh, from Celebrating the Saints. A reading from a homily of John Chrysostom. The sons of Zebedee press Christ as follows. Promise that one of us may sit at your right hand and the other at your left. How does Christ deal with this request? We should note that their demand comes as a response to an earlier question of Christ. What would you have me do for you? 
It is not that Christ was ignorant of what was going through their minds, but that he wanted them to speak their minds, to lay open their wounds so he could apply healing ointment. Furthermore, he wants to show them that it is not a spiritual gift for which they are asking, and that if they knew just what their request involved, they would never dare make it. This is why he says you do not know what you are asking. In other words, you do not know what a great and splendid thing it is, and how much beyond the reach even of the heavenly powers. Then Christ continues, can you drink the cup which I must drink, and be baptised with the baptism which I must undergo? He is saying, you talk of sharing honours and trophies with me, but I must talk of struggle and toil. Now is not the time for awards or the time for my glory to be revealed. The present time is one of bloodshed, war and danger. Notice how by the manner of his questioning he exhorts and challenges them. He does not say, can you face being slaughtered? Are you prepared to shed your blood? Instead he puts a different question, can you drink the cup? And then he coaxes them, saying the cup which I must drink, so that the prospect of sharing it with him may make them more eager. He also calls his suffering a baptism to show that it will effect a great cleansing of the whole world. The disciples answer him, we can. Zeal makes them answer immediately, even though they really do not know what they are saying, but still think they will receive what they ask for. How does Christ respond to their zealous reply? You will indeed drink my cup and be baptised with my baptism. He is really prophesying a great blessing for them, since effectively he is telling them, you will be found worthy of martyrdom. You will suffer what I suffer and end your life with a violent death, thus sharing everything with me. But seats at my right and left side are not mine to give. They belong to those for whom the Father has prepared them. Thus, after lifting their minds to higher goals and preparing them to meet and overcome all that could make them dejected, he corrects their request. Then the other ten become angry at the two brothers. See how imperfect all the disciples were. The two who tried to receive preferential treatment over the other ten and the ten's jealousy of the two disciples. And yet, as I said earlier on, when we look at these two disciples later on in their lives, we observe how free they were of these impulses. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read how John, whom here is recorded as the one who asks for preferential treatment, in fact yields to Peter when it comes to preaching and in working miracles. And James, for his part, was not to live long. From the beginning, he was inspired by so great a zeal that setting aside all earthly interests, he rose to such preeminence that it was inevitable that he would be killed straight away. And so to Jeremiah 26, verses 1 to 15. Thank you. At the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim, son of Joshua of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the citizens of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. Speak to them all the words that I command you. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, all of them, and will turn from their evil way, that I may change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring on them because of their evil doings. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to heed the words of my servants, the prophets whom I send to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make this, this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking, all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. 
Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, It is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will change his mind about the disasters that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me, do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all <coughs> these words in your ears. Thank you. I think the line that was the most shocking to me then when you were reading Jeremiah had finished speak when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak, it then says the priests and the prophets and all the people, and I thought it was going to say um, accepted that they'd done wrong, but it didn't. They all gathered together and decided they're going to kill him for speaking what God had told him to speak. So uh, sometimes these things don't go the way we think they're going to. And it's a good example of poor Jeremiah because he has to spend his whole time telling these people that things are going to go badly for them. And the aim of the prophets when they speak like that is that people respond by changing their ways. So it's a bit like a, a parent or a teacher telling the child, if you carry on going that way, there will be these consequences. You'll be disciplined or punished or whatever. Um, and they're supposed to, the prophets generally speak quite sort of calamitous things which are due to shock, bound to shock, and what the idea is that people turn, change their ways. But uh, there were other people who speak and claim to be speaking God's word at the time of Jeremiah, who were saying everything's going to be well. And effectively there were um, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians were all gathered around and they were going to take Jerusalem. Jeremiah said that God said to him that everybody would be taken out into exile and that was the right thing to do. But the other prophets were saying, stand against them, you'll be all right, you'll stay here. And uh, Jeremiah insists that he's speaking God's word, but uh, they're all keen to put him to death. And I guess, I think we're just following, you know, the, uh, following our way through Jeremiah at the moment, but it might have been a particular reading, given that we're looking at James today, who was put to death for standing up for um, what he believed in. So our next reading is Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, a few, a few verses, just 14 to 20. And Susan, would you be happy to read that for us? Yeah. So it's just 14 to 20. never hear that uh, reading without thinking of the magic roundabout and Zebedee yeah. showing my age on. but um yes yeah, so we've got two short bits of uh, different stories Jesus has been arrested Jesus goes to Galilee 
I'm not quite sure where his hometown relates because he lived in Capernaum but he was brought up in Nazareth but he'd been baptised and in some gospel accounts he then had that period of preparation after his baptism in the wilderness and then this is the start of his ministry in Mark after John was arrested Jesus comes to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God the kingdom of God has come near repent and believe in the good news the kingdom of God being a, a way of life, a change of heart and attitude, God's rule in us, rather than a temporal taking over of land, arguably. And so that's his message. And then we're told he passes along the Sea of Galilee and he calls Simon and Andrew, James and John. And uh, when we see this, sometimes in films, or when we read it, we assume that he just kind of out of the blue walks past and says, follow me. And so it seemed almost as being miraculous, and I'm happy for it to be taken that way, but it seems to me that it makes more sense to see this as being a, a story where a lot of the stuff has been left out, otherwise it would just go on and on and on. And I suspect they knew of him. I suspect he'd passed that way before. I suspect there was sort of discussion because they, I don't know, if you want to go down the miracle route, that's fine. They just leave everything and go. Um, but I just wonder how much of that separation from their past life and their new life of following Jesus there actually was. Because they go back to fishing when Jesus dies. I wonder whether they, you know, when we join a church, for instance, we may still live in the same village, we may still have the same job, but we just engage a little bit more with something else. I wonder whether that is actually what was happening here. It's very easy to read it, as I say, as if they kind of joined a cult and they left everything behind and went and joined this whole new thing. And I don't know whether that's whether my understanding is right and whether it was a complete change just at the drop of a come follow me and they leave everything and go. Um, and they must have known something though, because how many people, if someone came up and said, you know, leave everything and follow me, how many people? I agree. It makes more sense, I think, if we're talking to people about the faith, to talk about this as if it was a summary of a longer process. Mm. Because I think it's very challenging, isn't it, to say to somebody, this is an example of how people came to faith in the old days. Jesus said, follow me, and they even left everything. He even left his father. Yeah. And I don't know whether that... Yeah, it doesn't quite ring true, if you know what I mean. And I think if we're talking to people about the journey of faith, it is more in stages. And we still need to be engaged with our families. We still need to be engaged with our, our living, our, you know, what we've been trained up as, I think. Um, it's not a case of, for some people, they need to leave everything, for sure. But for others of us, we're sort of still in the world. And we're just living where God has put us. Mm, but it's just... Do, don't they? Yeah. And nuns. Yeah. There are some things I guess we have to give up when we come to faith. But anyway, just some thoughts on Mark chapter 1, those few verses. So should we then turn back to um, evening prayer on Wednesday for the responsory? Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Now we have got a refrain on page 485. If you'd like to look that up, then you can read that out. It's the one in the middle of the page, on the foundation. And then we just read the rest of the Magnificat together and I conclude with the refrain again at the end. The Song of Mary with a refrain from James the Apostle, 25th of July on 485 of the Red Book. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city are written the names of the apostles of the Lamb. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, 
The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and <coughs> lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city, are written the names of the Apostles of the Lamb. Let us pray. One God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We thank you for the day past and all that has been good about it. Those things that we have been able to achieve to our satisfaction. Those opportunities we have had to be a blessing to others and to receive blessing from others. Whether they have served us in shops, whether they have done jobs for us or spoken to us in conversation over a coffee. We thank you for the beauty of the place in which we live and for our health, families and income. Where these are sufficient and a blessing to us. We also look back over the day and recognise there have been things about it that have been more trying. There perhaps we have not enjoyed good health or our health condition have interfered with our ability to achieve the things we had set out to. Perhaps people have been rude to us or overlooked us. Maybe we have heard or given news that has been disappointing or upsetting. Maybe situations in our relationships have been hard. And so we pray for your forgiveness and your healing and your setting to right all of these memories of the past day that we bring to mind and leave at the foot of the cross. Open Doors is continuing to give thanks for all that they achieved last year. They distributed over 128,000 children's Bibles and 58,000 Sunday School resources around the world. With them we pray that God's Word will continue to equip a new generation of believers across the world to share the Gospel in their communities. From Green Christian, uh, from, sorry, Green Christian, from Christian Aid, we pray for peace in Syria and for this enduring conflict to end. There's a picture of a family on the prayer diary page. And I presume the mother's name is Sawson. We pray for Sawson and her children who fled Syria and are now living as refugees in Iraq. The Diocese of Salisbury Cycle of Prayer has us pray for Wimborne St John. We pray for their new curate, Matt, their youth worker, Andy, and children and young families coordinator, Kevin, and their work with children and young people in clubs, groups, local schools. 
We to ask your blessing on their pastoral care and support to seniors and their outreach opportunities in the local community, including a boating event at Dream Boats, presumably a local attraction this month. Pray too for the school in that parish, Wimborne St John's. Pray that the pupils and staff will have a good break and that the changes to both pupils and teachers as they change classes next year that they will be mitigated by knowledge of your continuing presence and your faithfulness and pray that they will have rest and pray for the lead minister in Wimborne St John a Peter and for their wardens, treasurers and secretaries and all other ministers and other staff that keep the show on the road there Pray for the Episcopal churches in South Sudan and Sudan, for the Diocese of Olo, and for their Bishop Tandema. We pray that you will continue to give them hope and perseverance and provide for them. We ask that you re-establish rule of law and peace in that place, where collectively they are able to be policed and carry out their ordinary lives with support of the military They'll be able to feed themselves, have appropriate medical care, maybe even engage in commerce and education as they were able to very soon. And we pray your blessing of health, wealth and prosperity, salvation, healing into deliverance on the addresses in West Knighton of West Knighton, Stafford Close, Oakwood, Loscombe Lane, Little Main, Lewell Way and Lewell, Knighton Wood, Highgate Lane, Hardy's Row, Glebe Way, Garden Close and Gabriel Cottages. We pray for those who live in these addresses that do not yet know you. Those that do will be salt and light, being compelling, valued and healing in their communities. We pray for the businesses that are based there or serve those addresses that they will continue to do well and so be able to provide food Good services, jobs, those amongst whom they operate. As we pray for the businesses in West Knight, we remember our farmers across the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland in this time of drought. We pray that they will have the support they need more immediately in looking after their crops and making them um, as lucrative and as valuable for purchase as possible so they get the maximum returns as they look after stock in these difficult conditions and in the medium and longer term as they try and maintain cash flow and balances with the poor returns and the extra resources they will need to feed stock getting them through the winter. We pray they'll have wisdom as they set their prices for what they sell, as things will be in higher demand and there'll be shortages in the months to come. And thank you for Farm Community Network and others who support those in the growing industry. And pray for Helen, Graham, Mike, Tony, Guy, Elizabeth, David, John, Peter, Steph, Carol and Clint and others that we know of who are struggling financially in terms of relationship with health, accommodation, work or other issues. We pray that you will move in sovereign grace to provide in each of these circumstances and bless those for whom we pray and those that support them with wisdom and courage a knowledge of your presence in a way that gives faith in the face of fear even if their outcomes are not what they might have hoped for and finally we thank you for the lives of Brendan, Mary, Ben and Roger and all others who have recently died through sickness, violence, neglect accident, those who lost their lives in the forest fires, the wildfires in Greece. 
those who served you here, those we have known and loved but see no longer, and all whose ears mind falls at this time, including the Apostle James, give thanks for his zeal, his witness even unto death. We pray for those people and organisations that bear his patronage. We pray a special blessing on them, that you will honour them as they honour you. We ask that you will grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom according to your promises to humanity. And so we pray for ourselves and all who mourn change in life chances or the loss of a loved one. We pray that you will be for us the good shepherd leading us by still waters, providing for us in safety, even in the face of our fears and our enemies. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> Merciful God, whose holy apostle Saint James, leaving his father and all that he had, was obedient to the calling of your Son, Jesus Christ, and followed him even to death. Help us, forsaking the false attractions of the world, to be ready at all times to answer your call without delay. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.